Hello, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about minor blues progressions. Now, if you're not a blues musician, don't just skip by this lesson. You can take this progression and use it in pop, rock, Americana, R&B, funk, whatever. It's just a chord progression, but its basis comes from the blues and it echoes the one, four, five progression often found in a standard blues tune. But, you know, it's a chord progression. You can take it out of the blues and use it in any genre. And I'll give you an example of that later on. So we generally hear minor blues tunes in kind of slow blues ballads. Um, Albert King, as the years go by, the famous tune, B.B. King's The Thrill Is Gone, Stevie Ray Vaughan's Tin Pan Alley. These are all slow minor blues ballads. A typical blues has a 1-4-5 chord progression and is made up of dominant seven chords. So if we were playing in the key of, let's just say, G, right? We would have a G7 chord as our one. And that would go to a C7 chord as our four. It would go back to the G7. We'd go back to the C7. to the G7, now this is what's called the turnaround, where the verse turns around and comes back to the top. So it goes to the 5, D7, descends down to the 4, C7, and then goes to the 1. And then sometimes you'll hear right at the end another five to set up the one again. But all dominant chords. And that's the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord from a major key. Um, generally, the one chord triad is major. The four chord triad is major. And the five chord triad is major. So all they're doing in blues music is adding a minor seventh to all of those major triads to make them all dominant chords. Now, a minor blues is built off the six, two, and three chords from a major key. And we know that those are the three minor chords that are within any major key. So think of it this way. It's gonna start on the six chord. So that six becomes your one. So let's go up here to B minor, right here on the seventh fret. And if I want to play a minor triad, right, there's a B minor. That's the six, we'll call that the six chord. Technically, it would be in like the key of D, right? B is the six of D, but we're not going to worry about that. The song is in a minor key. That D chord is never going to show up. There aren't going to be any major chords popping up. It's just these three minor chords that are in the key of D, but it's being played in a minor key based off the six, B. So let me show you that relationship. If we start on the six, and we use that as our one, we're going to call it the, the one of the key, and we count up four notes playing a natural minor scale. One, two, three, four. There 
there's our four. If we want to go to the five, there's our five. So the one is a minor chord in this key. The four is a minor chord. The five is a minor chord because they are technically the six chord, two chord, three chord. But their relationship, if we make the six the one chord, is a one, four, five, a minor one, four, five. And when you see it written out, like with the Nashville numbering system, it's not, it'll either be written lowercase six, lowercase two, lowercase three, but that kind of confuses people. Because they're like, well, does that mean we're in a major key and we're just playing the minor chords? It's often written out as a lowercase one, lowercase four, lowercase five so that it looks like a blues progression, a one, four, five, just with lowercase Roman numerals designating that they're minor chords. So we would move from the B minor, and we would go up, just like we were going up to a four chord, just go up one string and play E minor. back down to the one, B minor. Back up to the, what would be the two chord, right? E minor, two chord in the key of D, but here it's acting as our four. This is our one, right? The six chord is our one. The two chord becomes our four. And then the three chord, F sharp minor, in this case, becomes our five. So we still have, just like with our regular blues, well, let's play triads. Major, major, major. A string to four, up a whole step to five. But we start that on a minor chord, go up a string to our four, go up a whole step to our five, and then back to our one. Okay, so the six chord is the one, two chord is the four, So that is a minor blues. Now something really cool about the minor blues. First off, um, I mentioned this before, but it's worth repeating. When you're playing a regular blues or a song that has like major triads in it, you can play the major or minor pentatonic or blues scale and get away with it because the minor third in your minor pentatonic scale creates a blue note over the major third in the major triad the band is playing so it works it doesn't work the other way around if the band is playing a minor chord you can't play a major pentatonic or major mode or major scale over that. The major third in your melody line, in your scale, is going to contrast really ugly, it's not, not, not going to be pretty, with the minor third being played by the band. So when you're playing a minor blues or any song in a minor key, you can only play minor pentatonics, minor blues scale, or minor modes. Now dig this. A lot of players will just play minor pentatonic over a minor blues. Sounds 
sounds good, sounds bluesy. But what if you want to get past that? What if you want to add some tonalities that are not so straight ahead bluesy? We can move beyond the pentatonics and play the associated modes. We learned in our lesson on modes that every chord in a major key, including the three minor chords, has a corresponding mode. So if we're starting on the sixth chord, we would have the sixth mode, the relative minor, also known as the natural minor scale or aeolian mode. different than minor pentatonic. I'll mix them together. Do a little pentatonic. Come down in minor, natural minor. The same would go for the two chord. We could play pentatonic, minor pentatonic. Or we can play the mode, the second mode, that's associated with the, the two chord, the Dorian mode. those together very Santana sounding he would often mix his minor pentatonic with Dorian mode <laughs> pentatonic tonality and start getting these wonderful colorful modes that are minor you know and have more kind of um, dynamic tonalities to them the fifth chord in our minor one four five is the three chord of the key so that's going to have the third mode which is phrygian spanish minor Mix it with some pentatonics. So the minor blues form progression gives us some wonderful opportunities with soloing and melody writing because we have this wonderful overlap of minor pentatonic, minor blues scale with the natural minor mode, Dorian mode, and Phrygian mode. And those modes all overlap. So if I'm playing the progression and I'm playing from the five, the turnaround from the five down to the four, back to the one. Phrygian, these first two notes are part of the Dorian scale. Here's where Dorian starts and it has those two notes right there. So if you're playing from the five down to the four, it 
it's a perfectly natural transition from the Phrygian down into the Dorian. The Dorian shares notes, right? Those same three notes show up in the natural minor scale. So this four, five, minor six of the natural minor scale are the one, two, three of Dorian. So you can have these nice descending lines where the modes just seamlessly flow one into the other from the three to the two to the six. Let's take a look at a tune that is based on a minor blues progression, but it's not a minor blues at all. It's an old, very old, Americana kind of spiritual tune, um, kind of early gospel. It was written in 1909, maybe 1910. Very old, old, old American song. And it's called Poor Wayfarer and Stranger. And it uses those three minor chords, but it doesn't play the typical one, four, five. It doesn't have the turnaround from the five to the four to the one. It just plays one, four, one, four, and then it goes up to the five and then back to the one. So there is no 5-4 turnaround. But one of my favorite forms of music outside heavy blues rock is this kind of underground scene that happened in the 70s where there were a lot of local small funk bands like the East St. Louis Gospelettes and the Space Singers of Chicago and the World Wonders of Birmingham, Alabama who were recording 45s, the little records that were singles that just had two songs, side A and side B, and they would record them at little local studios and then self-release them. So they're kind of hard to find, but I stumbled across a YouTube channel, of course, that had a whole bunch of them, you know, and it's this 70s gospel funk. And what some of them do is take these really old hymns like I'll Fly Away and Angel Band and Poor Wayfair and Stranger that are these really slow country gospel church tunes and they would play them upbeat and make them into funk numbers and just really rock them out and make them up tempo and just awesome with these great driving funk rhythms. So a great example of that is uh, Cliff Gober's version of Wayfaring Stranger. So typically, this song would be played very slow. It's a very somber tune. I'm just a poor Wayfaring Stranger. did it um, kind of something like this. I'm just a poor weather and stranger traveling through this world Which 
hip, very different, right? So you can take a minor blues and stick it into a funk progression, stick it into a rock tune, however you want to use it. Don't let the term minor blues make you think that it just has to be a blues song. So let's look at a couple of ways that you can play it. What are some kind of chord options? One, you could play your typical, uh, we'll stick with the key of B because I want to show you a cool trick. There's only certain keys that this kind of trick will work in. You can't play below the seventh fret because we're going to go down as well as up to get our four and five chords. And you can't, the four of B is open E. So if you went down to B flat, you can't get down to E flat. Okay, so this technique only works from B up. It also only works really up to this E on the 12th fret because you're gonna have to play on the upper three strings and then there's your four at the 15th fret and there's your five at the 17th fret. So you're really kind of stretching to get those upper keys. But you can definitely do it in B, C, D. You can, you can pull it off from this E and this F and this G. You would just be playing different chords. You wouldn't have your root on the high E string. So let's take a look at this. Instead of just playing a this minor one four five one way, like if we were in G, right down here, we could play it one four and then five, or we could play it one four five that way. Okay, so what we're looking at is this, this linear one, four, five, going up the neck. You can't go down from this G and play that one, four, five, but you can from this B at the seventh fret, which is when I play that Cliff Gober tune, that version of Poor Wayfair and Stranger, this is what I do. So instead of, let's just play the um, this B minor on the top three strings. So you've got your root, the fifth, and the minor third. So you could just play that. What I was playing when I was demoing the song, just to add a little more girth, was I was putting down my third finger on the ninth fret to get this root. So I have a root on top, and I have a root down in the bottom in the bass. Now if I want, I could just pick up that finger and I have the minor seventh under it. And now I have the minor seventh chord. So I could play a triad, and then I could play the seventh chord, triad, minor seven, a little bit different tonality, or I can bring that root down and play. It looks like I'm just kind of playing like a bar chord or something, but I'm just barring all the way across to the minor seventh. You could just bar the top three strings, it doesn't matter. Whatever's more comfortable for you, I prefer to bar all the way to the minor seven because I can get the minor seventh that way without moving my hand, and I can do a hammer on. just to get a little different rhythmic variation, tonal variation within your rhythms. So let's just play, I'm gonna play that chord, like I did in the song. So, here's our one. If we're playing in B minor, the four chord is gonna be right here at the 12th fret. So put your finger, or that bar, at the 12th fret, and that's your E minor, your four chord. Your 
your five chord is going to be a whole step up from that. So just slide up a whole step to F sharp minor. Back to your one. Now, let's say you do that in the verses, right? Let's say in the verses you ascend. In the chorus, let's descend just to give it some sonic difference and put a little more low end and gravitas into the chorus. So here's our verse. Here's our one. But instead of going up to the 12th fret for our four, we're going to go down to the open E for our four chord. So the open top three strings, root, fifth, minor third, and if you want, minor seventh of the E minor chord. And if I put my second finger down, I have that same chord shape like this, where I'm just playing the root on the D string. That's all I'm doing right there. I'm playing that minor triad with the root in the bass. There's my four chord. If I want my five chord, I'm just simply going to go bar right here at the second fret, right? Go from open up two frets, and there is my five chord. I'm using the same chord shape I used earlier. See how easy that transition is to that four chord? And you just take this first finger, move it down a string, and raise all the rest of them up. There's your four chord, E minor. And you slide back up to your, to your one. So let's just play the top three strings, right? Just for fun, just the top three strings, because it's easy. And let's listen to them going up, ascending, and then descending. different tonality and a different kind of dynamic. Let me show you a little cool trick, a rhythm trick that I like to do. Um, I, it's not, I didn't invent it, I kind of you know swiped it from funk players, but it's a cool minor chord kind of rhythm fill that you can do. I was doing it in the beginning of, I did a lesson on rhythm fundamentals and I was doing this exact same thing on acoustic. So we'll stay in this B minor, right? And we'll go up to the E and the F sharp. So here's your B minor triad, root on top. If you come down with your third finger, you're now playing the second, the minor second, and the major sixth, which we know are color tones. The second is like, you can consider it a ninth, and, or even just a second, doesn't matter. And the sixth is the sixth. So neither of them change the chord quality. If you go from here to here, you're getting a six and a two, but you're not changing the chord quality. It's staying a minor triad. If you wanna hit this note on the G string, right, and play all three, you're playing the fourth, the perfect fourth. Because here's your minor third, so here's your fourth. So we've got four, six, two, all color tones. 
not going to hurt the chord quality at all. So you can hammer on and off and get cool kind of rhythmic variations. Now, if you play the top two strings with your pinky, you're getting the minor seventh and the minor third on top. Remember those lessons way, way back in the very beginning when we were talking about soloing and easy soloing ideas and soloing over a 12 bar blues and we looked at that exact same pattern. Fifth, minor seventh, root, minor third the top of the minor pentatonic scale. Okay? So we're simply taking those notes, the minor seven and minor third, and throwing them in on top of the triad. And then we can add them to those notes. in kind of any rhythmic fashion you want. So let me play through this minor one, four, five, right? This minor blues, kind of using those options. So just a little cool little minor pentatonic um, riff, kind of little chords that you can add to your minor pentatonic triad. And technically, those are called double stops. Whenever you play two notes and not a full chord. So here's our minor triad. But if I just play the top two notes, the fifth and the root, that's called a double stop. Or if this was my root and I put a minor third on top of it, that would be a double stop or a major third. So that's all we're doing is playing double stops of the third and the seven double stops of the six and two, and then a double stop of the five and one. So that's been an introduction to minor blues, um, how it's derived from the six, two, and three minor chords within a major key, how it can be used in other contexts other than a slow blues ballad, you know? And my favorite part is how you can apply the modes. The natural minor, the sixth mode, the Dorian, the second mode, and the Phrygian, the third mode, to color and give new specific minor tonalities to your soloing and your melodies other than just minor pentatonics. So there's minor blues. I hope this lesson was helpful. Thanks for coming around.